and he, he agreed, and he agreed to do it. The problem was that in 70, 76, when we made the film, those sets were no longer, in other words, you had to build every set. There were no, I thought, I was very naive. I thought some of these things were existing. For even the, uh, the railroad, the um, getting off the train sequences on the, the railroad station, uh, I thought that would exist on the MGM lot, you know, the beginning of the bandwagon. I'll go my way by myself, right? Well, we went there. It's a complete dis disaster. It was all torn away and uh, ripped away, and uh, I think they even use it in that's entertainment. They do, they do rip the show. Yeah, they show it, and that's what it was, so we couldn't use it. So we had to go, we had to actually go to an actual uh, station and build some things around it. But the idea had to be that it had to be New York, New York, shot completely in Los Angeles. Because when I was a kid, and we saw films that took place in New York, especially musicals uh, and gangster films, um, not necessarily Public Enemy, but I mean pictures like Side Street with, uh, no, Side Street was shot a lot in New York. Actually but, uh, it was, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, different, uh, different films. Uh, uh, by Raoul Walsh and, and uh, MGM films, sure. um, you'd see that the curb in the street was, was like, very high, yes. very high, and was very clean. And that's obviously not New York. And somehow, um, the back lot, even though it was exterior light, didn't seem quite real because the extras were moving a certain way. Right. The people behind the background were sort of walking, kind of acting walking. They weren't really walking. Exactly. They were like acting that they were walking. And I said, this is... There were never grid streets either, if you remember. No, no, there was, no, there, was, was, no. Always, there was always a curved street. Always a curved street, yeah. Right. And I wondered why, I said, well, this can't be New York. I mean, I was seven years old, but I knew then it couldn't be New York. And we come out, I come out on 2nd Avenue and 6th Street and see the, the real city. And, uh, uh, and so I, I began to, um, uh, once the film started really shooting in New York in the late 40s, early 50s, like Naked City, and even Kiss of Death and sure. things like that. Uh, and eventually, as we say, the really, really hit home and on the waterfront for us, the Lower East Side. Uh, uh, once I saw that, I realized it was changing. And I wanted very much to, um, to uh, uh, recreate that love I had. For, uh, for those films and the warmth I felt towards them because they were fooling us. They yes. were fooling us. But it was just an impression, you know. So if you notice, notice the extras too in New York, New York, they're all walking, acting, walking, <laughs> right? Or they're yeah. all dancing, acting, dancing. They're not, they really had to be a little specifically off. They had yeah. to be not quite right, you know. And uh, of course, of course, the car scene in in, uh, in uh, it was his car actually, the green car. I tried yes. to get that color green, the way the, the old sedan used sure. to be green, and we never quite got the green exactly right. Uh, it was kind of a forest green that I wanted. Uh, painted it four times the car. But that scene is direct homage to the uh, scene where Lana Turner becomes hysterical in Bed and the Beautiful, yes. uh, Minnelli. And uh, Minnelli's films I love, and, and uh, the thing about Bed and the Beautiful, um, that scene is actually much more elegant than Bed and the Beautiful. The camera actually moves and sways back and forth. And it's all one shot, isn't it? That's all yes. yes. No, and I saw that film, I was 1952, I was 10 years old. I'll never forget. Yeah. I also never forget that film because they, I was so fascinated by the films they were making in the film. Right, of course. <laughs> right, right, yes. I wonder that's, what those stories yeah, were. There's that Russian one. Where yeah, or, Russia, the, yeah. or the doctor arriving in a, a sort of a western kind yes, of a, right. 1890 film. So that, from something very strange and very beautiful. And I guess the, the, the trashy um, uh, hysteria of the picture is yes. what caught me too. I says, I, sometimes I like to be cheap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. You know. <laughs> Caught the picture, Georgia. Thought you were swell. Thought yeah. you were swell, you know. Right, yeah. I mean, that was outrageous. Sure. Outra and what about that incredible, incredible crane shot uh, of the crane? It's yes, no, no, the no, beginning of the film with Barry exactly. Sullivan directing, and the camera comes down. And I wondered what those machines were. I had no idea. Sure. And it just fascinated me, uh, the Jonathan Shields character and all of that. But um, mainly, the New York, New York had to do uh, a lot with the musicals, and uh, as I say, a homage to the old films. Then the idea was the films of the 70s. The films of the 70s would then be imprinted or superimposed over that. Almost a documentary of a marriage, let's say, right. a marriage between two creative people. And um, uh, that was the most important. Would they, would they work? I don't know. Uh, because you see, we didn't only stop, we didn't stop at sets. We went to um, costumes. All the shoulder pads were maybe a quarter of an inch longer. Uh, ties were maybe a quarter of an inch bigger. Collars were bigger. And makeup on the men, too. If makeup on, on lips and everything to try to give that three strip technicolor feeling right um but i felt i felt after a while i was doing it i realized how the old hollywood that i love was really gone and i always say it's almost like it was like dressing up a corpse and it's like it had nothing it had no more life in it that way and we had to give it a new life and i was crashing the two forms together and i don't know how successful it is but uh, um i did enjoy doing some of the sweeping camera moves and things like that that was fun i was thinking when you were just talking now about you know the way you were sort of putting this le level of improvisation on top of yeah. the sort of old mm -hmm. Hollywood sort of confected style. In terms of directing the actors, um, was this a way that you were used to working with, with De Niro, for example, having you know, the streets together yeah. and, and so forth? Yeah. Was this 
a common part of the working relationship. Well, well and Main Street's, in fact, right now on the television, that scene, the most important improvisational scene is on now on the TV uh, they have here uh, that we did. It was Bob's idea to do this scene in the back room, the Main Street's, and uh, he improvised on the last day of shooting. And uh, it was mainly his idea, and I'm, I loved it because he really had the character down. He had the character down. And what he did, what he was able to do, what he was able to do was to, yeah, what he was able to do in this was to really capture, capture the quality of life for the Italian American small time hood in New York, in Lower East Side. Not, maybe not Pleasant Avenue, 116th Street, other, uh, the other enclaves of Italian Americans, but definitely the Lower East Side and some guys we knew as we were growing up. Um, and he was really able to do it. And uh, I felt that anybody could just take this sequence and later on, uh, 40 years from now, look at it and really see how we lived. Just that one little sequence. Yeah. You can see from the whole film, too. I mean, this this film, Mean Streets, was obviously not The Godfather. It was it was the real day to day life of what we had, what we lived through, of course, my yeah. friends and I. And uh, uh, so, from the basis of that improvisation, we then I then did Alice doesn't live here anymore, and I worked that way with Ellen Burstyn, and we were able to improvise from Robert Getchell's script, and it was quite quite good with Getchell. In fact, he would help us. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, the Taxi Driver, very little improvisation. Very little improvisation in Taxi Driver. But by the time we got to New York, New York, we played off of that scene you just saw on Mean Streets. We went further. Every scene became like that. But unfortunately, we didn't have any place we were going. We didn't have a stopping point. And so everybody would improvise, would improvise. I, I never forget, I would, get, I would get involved in scenes where people would order food and drinks. And I would shoot ordering uh, drinks for a day and a half, two days sometimes. There's a big scene in the uh, club, the Neon Club, where they order drinks of Pink Lady, right. and all that. And uh, uh, I did other scenes where they're ordering sandwiches, which went on and on. And I thought that ordering food is important for, to the character. And you would see. But I mean, I just didn't have enough time between, between the singing and how long that took. Sure. I couldn't have time to have people ordering food. for. Uh, the, in fact, the first cut was four hours and 20 minutes. Yeah. That was probably the best version of it. You know? I was wondering, because you were talking about <clears throat> working with improvisation with actors and, and, the, and the fact you've done it with some other actors as well. What is bad acting as far as you're concerned? I mean, in other words, there's a, a, a real collaboration between you and the actors, but what is the point when you think, no, they're, they're, they're being too self-indulgent as actors, or no, that I this don't, is You know, I can never tell if they're being self-indulgent uh, too much. Um, I mean, I guess I could, but I, I, I guess what, for me, the hardest thing is to get some, uh, an actor, another actor, one actor to talk to the other actor. Basically, it's, for me, acting is you know, just sit down the way we're talking. And now, as even I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm, I don't normally talk to you this way because I know we're being photographed, exactly. and I'm talking a little lecturing almost to, a, to an audience out there. Right. But because I know we have to make a certain amount of time, uh, points in 10 minutes of magazine time, and it's a little hard. But I find that, I find that, that if I just don't, my ear tells me. But I could, I could, a lot of the scenes in Mean Streets I didn't even look at. I was hiding behind bars and stuff. I could tell from the earphones if the scene was acting, if right. the acting was going well. I could tell by the tones in their voices. And that's it, just my ear, uh, just my ear for dialogue. And that's why I say it might be very difficult for me to do a picture of the same France, or, because I have to know more of the idiom, the people, the way they speak. Italy, maybe not, but mm. in France. Well, well, that brings up a question I had of uh, Last Temptation of Christ, that you're already talking about an ear, but, yeah. but, but there you are, Last Temptation of Christ, doing a story. Oh, it's tricky. Well, exactly, <laughs> with American actors, or both very American, tricky. and you're doing with biblical times. How, how does your ear come in on that? Just, we, just, we just did, you take, take the assumption that um, basic, plain American speech, plain American speech, not, not exalted British speech, right. not plain British speech, but plain American speech, um, had to sound good to my ears that I could believe them, with slight regional variations, like New York, um, uh, I know, I'm sorry. Oh, look what you did to the cork. Okay, let me, you want some, you got some water? Martin, do you want club soda? Yes. Uh, this is, uh, oh, sorry, you can, a little chip on this. Where? Oh, no, don't give it to Oh, my God, it's broke. I didn't even notice that. I'll get you another one. Throw it out. The glass is broke. I never realized it. I don't drink no wine anyway. I'll have a little bit. Yeah, drink a little here. You sit here and drink. Uh, I'll drink give you some. Was well, the last time we did this was, what, 14 years ago, 1974, right? Yeah. 74, yeah. Uh, Italian-American. Charlie, open this for you, Yeah, yeah. 
If I'd known, I would have brought, I would have brought some wine. I've forgotten. But I'm a... oh, I got a lot of wine over here. We've got to use it. Yeah, but this, this is California wine. It's not Italian. <laughs> You want uh, the Italian wine? No, it's okay. It's got one now. Now it's, you know, know. Yeah, now we have... Uh, <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Jesus. That's yeah. spoiled it. Uh, tell me, how did you get up the next morning? Oh, my God. Uh, how did you... I wonder how you got up to go to work. <laughs> I, I, I did it, but I collapsed in midday. You were in the way... I think this, before we got to the corner, you were out like a light. I was very tired, yeah. That's all. That's all, much. At that uh, birthday dinner. The um... Yeah, birthday dinner. The birthday I, dinner. Yeah, I got a little. I, I he got a little. Things. You should have seen him. No, I don't know how he went up those stairs. What? I never get drunk. No. No, I have a built-in mechanism. It, it makes me nauseous. I don't like it. <laughs> it makes me sick. But no, I mean, I did. I did. Uh, did uh, uh, you drink? Sip you did, too much you did go a little overboard. Yeah, and I mean, I got a little. I got news for you. I open up a bottle of wine. I never do this. That's right, yeah. That's what I told you. I told you. That's because it's California wine. It's not Italian tonight. I don't know what it is. All right, sit down. All right, all right. Who's eating who's not? <laughs> they, well, they, they want to take okay, it right where they can have it. Thank you, oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I think there's more macaroni coming out. There's more macaroni coming out. I'm going to make a pound of macaroni for them. Then there's some meat they can have. Oh. Give me more some cheese for you. What kind of cheese? You want some cheese in the basket? Oh, yeah, yeah. And you want the mozzarella cheese? No, I can't. Please. You want the one with the mozzarella rolls? Just a little. Huh? Oh, you got that? That's the kind I like. What is that? Cheese in the basket. No, no. What's the what's the name of it? That's what we call it. Cheese in the basket. That's what we call it. It's made of whole milk and things. Oh no, no. But that isn't that a ricotta? Yeah, it's a special cheese. No, it's like a ricotta. Yeah. All right. Let them, get them to go in the middle of the cheese. Um, did, uh, I'll pay you. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, well, you're gonna have to, somebody's gonna have to eat because you're gonna keep talking to them. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Let me get here. Um, the taste thematics. The thematics I want you to taste about, this, right? I want you, you to taste this, good. Do you want to talk a little about good. the thematics, or? Very good, taste it. That's a very intellectual, a very intellectual point about about uh, whether my parents are uh, regard my parents as characters in a fiction film or in or in a documentary. It's very intellectual that point. It's, <laughs> it's not a criticism. It's not a criticism. It's something. It's, it's something I never thought of. Come on, the raviolis get cold. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. Uh, I, didn't, I, never, I never thought of that, but it's an interesting question because a lot of the uh, stories, the, why I say it's why we make movies for my generation uh, usually come from from the experience and the experience and. Uh, a lot of the stories that uh, found, my, found their way into movies that, like the short film, it's not just you, Murray, and Mean Streets, of course, all comes from my own personal experience. And a lot of the stories I know come from them. Uh, but I think, I think one, hopefully, there's one more picture I'd like to make, which we, I can't say too much about, but we're working on, where uh, we go back into the past, around. and it's really based on them, or based on, based on the, the based on, yeah, they should pass it, based on, based on the, um, on the experience of the Italian, Italian American, in other words, from the 1920s and 30s the into the 50s and 60s, and how the generations change, and how they, the next generation, third generation, loses, loses its, um, its, uh, Italian, uh, heritage, or, uh, becomes more American, let me put it that way. Uh, but just a, just a story of survival in the 20s and 30s, based mainly on them and my family. I was sort of working on that as a pet project, a pet project for, I don't know, in the future sometime. Well, you'll see that. Huh? You'll see that, that picture, then you realize. What? I said them, later on, when I'm, maybe I'm gone, it's better, because yeah. they, they know where it comes from, and I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> Bob's idea to do this scene in the back room, the Mean Streets, and uh, he improvised on the last day of shooting. And uh, it was mainly his idea, and I, I loved it because he really had the character down. He had the character down, and what he did, what he was able to do, what he was able to do was to, yeah, what he was able to do in this was to really capture, capture the quality of life for the Italian American small time hood. Mm. In New York, no, you 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 well, not, not maybe not Pleasant Avenue, 116th Street, or the, or the other enclaves of Italian Americans, right. but definitely the Lower East Side, and some guys we knew as we were growing up. Um, and he was really able to do it. And uh, I felt that anybody could just take this sequence and later on, uh, 40 years from now, look at it and really see how we lived. Just that one little sequence. Yeah. You can see from the whole film too. I mean, this this film, Mean Streets, was obviously not The Godfather. It was it was the real day-to-day -day life of what we had, what we lived through. Of course, yeah. friends and I. And uh, uh, so, from the basis of that improvisation, 
we then, I then did Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, and I worked that way with Ellen Burstyn. And we were able to improvise from Robert Getchell's script, and it was quite, quite good. With Getchell, in fact, he would help us. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, The Taxi Driver, very little improvisation. Very little improvisation in Taxi Driver. But by the time we got to New York, New York, we played off of that scene you just saw on Mean Streets. We went further. Every scene became like that. But unfortunately, we didn't have any place we were going. We didn't have a stopping point. And so everybody would improvise, would improvise. I, I never forget, I would, get, I would get involved in scenes where people would order food and drinks. And I would shoot ordering uh, drinks for a day and a half, two days sometimes. There's a big scene in the uh, club, the Neon Club, where they order drinks at Pink Lady, right. and all that. And uh, um, I did other scenes where they're ordering sandwiches, which went on and on. And I thought that ordering food is important for, to the character. And you would see. But I mean, I just didn't have enough time between, between the singing and how long that took. Sure. I couldn't have time to have people ordering food. for. Uh, the, in fact, the first cut was four hours and 20 minutes. Yeah. That was probably the best version of it. You know? I was wondering what, what you were going to be talking about. <clears throat> working with improvisation with actors and, and, the, and the fact you've done it with some other actors as well. What is bad acting as far as you're concerned? I mean, in other words, there's a, a, a real collaboration between you and the actors, but what is the point when you think, no, they're, they're, they're being too self-indulgent as actors, or no, that I, I this don't, is You know, I can never tell if they're being self-indulgent uh, too much. Um, I mean, I guess I could, but I, I, I guess what for me, the hardest thing is to get some uh, an actor, another actor, one actor to talk to the other actor. Basically, it's, for me, acting is... I just sit down the way we're talking. And now, as even I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm, I don't normally talk to you this way because I know we're being photographed, exactly. and I'm talking a little lecturing almost to, a, to an audience out there. Right. But because I know we have to make a certain amount of uh, points in 10 minutes of magazine time, and it's a little hard. But I find that, I find that, that if I just don't, my ear tells me. But I could, I could, a lot of the scenes in Mean Streets I didn't even look at. I was hiding behind bars and stuff. I could tell from the earphones if the scene was acting, if right. the acting was going well. I could tell by the tones in their voices. And that's it, just my ear. Uh -huh. Just my ear for dialogue. And that's what <laughs> <laughs> caught the picture, George. I thought you were swell. Thought yeah. you were swell, you know. Right, yeah. I mean, that was outrageous. Sure. Outra and what about that incredible, incredible crane shot uh, of the crane itself? Yes, no, no, the film, beginning of the film with Barry exactly. Sullivan directing, and the camera comes down. And I wondered what those machines were. I had no idea. Sure. And it just fascinated me, uh, the Jonathan Shields character and all of that. But um, mainly, the New York, New York had to do uh, a lot with the musicals. and. Uh, as I say, a homage to the old films. Then the idea was the films of the 70s. The films of the 70s would then be imprinted or superimposed over that. Almost a documentary of a marriage, let's say. Right. A marriage between two creative people. And um, uh, that was the most important. Would they, would they work? I don't know. Uh, because, you see, we didn't only stop, we didn't stop at sets. We went to um, costumes. All the shoulder pads were maybe a quarter of an inch longer. Uh, ties were maybe a quarter of an inch bigger. Collars were bigger. And makeup on the men, too. Makeup on, on lips and everything to try to give that three strip technicolor feeling. Right. Um, but I felt, I felt after, while I was doing it, I realized that the old Hollywood that I love was really gone. And I always say it's almost like it was like dressing up a corpse. And it's like it had nothing, it had no more life in it in that way. And we had to give it a new life. And I was crashing the two forms together. And I don't know how successful it is, but. Uh, um, I did enjoy doing some of the sweeping camera moves and things like that. That was fun. I was thinking when you were just talking now about, you know, the way you were sort of putting this le level of improvisation on top of yeah. the sort of old mm -hmm. Hollywood sort of confected style. In terms of directing the actors, um, was this a way that you were used to working with, with De Niro, for example, having you know, the whole Mean Streets is together yeah. and, and so forth? Yeah. Was this a common part of your working relationship? Well, in Mean Facebook. Streets, in fact, right now on the television, that scene, the most important improvisational scene is on now on the TV. Uh, they have here uh, that we did. It was Bob's idea to do the scene in the back room in Mean Streets. And uh, he improvised on the last day of shooting. And uh, it was mainly his idea. And I'm, I loved it because he really had the character down. He had the character down. And what he did, what he was able to do, what he was able to do was to... Yeah, what he was able to do in this was to really capture, capture the quality of life for the Italian-American small-time hood. Mm -hmm. In New York, no, Lower East Side. Not, not, maybe not Pleasant Avenue, 116th Street, other, uh, the other enclaves of Italian Americans, right. but definitely the Lower East Side and some guys we knew as we were growing up. Um, and he was really able to do it. And uh, I felt that anybody could just take this sequence and later on, uh, 40 years from now, look at it and really see how we lived. Just that one little sequence. Yeah. You can see from the whole film, too. I mean, this this film, Mean Streets, was obviously not The Godfather. It was, it was the real day-to-day -day life of what we had, what we lived through, of course, my yeah. friends and I. And uh, uh, so, from the basis of that improvisation, we then I then did Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, and I worked that way with Ellen Burstyn. 
and we were able to improvise from Robert Getchell's script, and it was quite quite good with Getchell. In fact, he would help us. Mm -hmm. I don't know how successful it is, but uh, um, I did enjoy doing some of the sweeping camera moves and things like that. That was fun. I was thinking when you were just talking now about you know the way you were sort of putting this le level of improvisation on top of yeah. the sort of old mm -hmm. Hollywood sort of confected style. In terms of directing the actors. Um, was this a way that you were used to working with, with De Niro, for example, having you know, the whole Mean Streets together yeah. and, and so forth? Yeah. Like, was this a common part of your working relationship? Well, to well and Mean Streets, in fact, right now on the television, that scene, the most important improvisational scene is on now on the TV uh, they have here uh, that we did. It was Bob's idea to do this scene in the back room in Mean Streets. And uh, he improvised on the last day of shooting. And, uh, it was mainly his idea. And I'm, I loved it because he really had the character down. He had the character down. And what he did, what he was able to do, what he was able to do was to, yeah, what he was able to do in this was to really capture, capture the quality of life for the Italian American small time hood in New York, in the Lower East Side. Not, maybe not Pleasant Avenue, 116th Street, the other enclaves of Italian Americans, but definitely the Lower East Side, and some guys we knew as we were growing up. Um, and he was really able to do it. And uh, I felt that anybody could just take this sequence and later on, uh, 40 years from now, look at it and really see how we lived. Just that one little sequence. Yeah. You can see from the whole film, too. I mean, this this film, Mean Streets, was obviously not The Godfather. It was, it was the real day-to-day -day life of what we, had, what we lived through, of course, my yeah. friends and I. And uh, uh, so, from the basis of that improvisation, we then I then did Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, and I worked that way with Ellen Burstyn. And we were able to improvise from Robert Getchell's script, and it was quite quite good with Getchell, in fact. He would help us. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, The Taxi Driver, very little improvisation. Very little improvisation in Taxi Driver. But by the time we got to New York, New York, we played off of that scene you just saw on Mean Streets. We went further. Every scene became like that. But unfortunately, we didn't have any place we were going. We didn't have a stopping point, and so everybody would improvise. Would improvise. I, I never forget. I would get. I would get involved in scenes where people would order food and drinks, and I would shoot ordering uh, drinks for a day and a half, two days sometimes. There's a big scene in the uh, club, the Neon Club, where they order drinks of Pink Lady, right. and all that. And uh, uh, I did other scenes where they're ordering sandwiches, which went on and on. And I thought that ordering food is important for to the character, and you would see. But I mean, I just didn't have enough time between between the singing. And how long that took? Sure. I couldn't have time to have people ordering food for. Uh, the, in fact, the first cut was four hours and twenty minutes. Yeah. That was probably the best version of it. You know? I was wondering because you were talking about <clears throat> working with improvisation with actors and, and, the, and the fact you've done it with some other actors as well. What is bad acting, as far as you're concerned? I mean, in other words, there's a, a, a real collaboration between you and the actors. But what is the point? When you think no, they're they're, they're being too self-indulgent as actors, or no, that I, I this don't, is. You know, I can never tell if they're being self-indulgent uh, too much. Um, I mean, I guess I could, but I, I, I guess what for me, the hardest thing is to get some, uh, an actor, another